This is too bad. Now, I am really sorry for me to have to follow uh, that lot. I'm sure ye all share my opinion that they have each and every one of them been utterly amazing and have shown two things. One, that the attack on our neutrality is not isolated. It is part of an international and European campaign of accelerated militarism but also that our neutrality is not an embarrassment and a disgrace, but it is actually something that can be a beacon to people all over the world. And we should take great solace from that. And I think Irish people do, because actually what the last week has shown us in Micheál Martin's debacle around his con forums is that Irish people actually instinctively love neutrality. It's part of our identity. It's tied up with our independence, with our sovereignty, with our right to make independent decisions on our foreign policy, and it comes from our past as a colonised people. We understand conflict. We understand that you have to talk to people you don't like, that sometimes you have to suck it up and get on with it, but that's what you have to do to mosey on through. But of course there's a section of Irish society who have always been embarrassed to be Irish. These are the same people who years ago bent the knee to British imperialism, who bow to US multinationals, and who now bend the knee to their European paymasters in the European Union. To them, being Irish is an embarrassment. Well, not to us, not to our president, thank God, and not to anybody else who has seen through the blatant one-sidedness of Micheál Martin's forums so eloquently outed by Loki there. Now, I think what we're going to see out of this is a lofty sort of nonsense about how, yes, we love neutrality, yes, we're Irish, we have our values, and we can have all that. Of course we're not going to join NATO. God knows, of course we'll still be neutral. But we are going to barrel down the road of further EU defence orientation. And that is being part of NATO. It is moving to a mutual defence union. It is involving spending billions on arms that could be spent on other things. So this is policy creep. This is what's coming out of that. The battle is on. And the first casualty is going to be the triple lock. Because they're not going to come out and say we're going to join NATO. But they are going to look at the triple lock. We heard Dame Louise tell us that a majority of people at the forum believed that this needed reform. Well, well, they would, given who they were, as Loki said. Now, the triple lock is the legal mechanism upon which we can send more than 12 troops abroad. It means it requires a UN mandate, it requires the support of the government and of the doll. Now the picture is painted that the UN is in chaos, it's an absolute basket case, and it's certainly true. The UN needs uh, a lot of reform. Multilateralism is under pressure, there's no doubt about that. But it's under pressure because of great power conflict. And what did Ireland do to speak out against that since 2008 in the growing tension between Russia and the US? Absolutely nothing. We have been here before with the Cold War, but we didn't abandon the UN then. Why should we do so now? Because the game in town is all about, oh, the veto, the veto. We're not going to be able to send our troops wherever we, we like. Michal Martin told us yesterday, will there ever be a UN mission ever again? Well, actually, Michal, last year there were 64 UN peacekeeping and renewed missions uh, by the UN. We reaffirmed the mandate for Bosnia. And this was talked about at the forum yesterday. They said, the Russian veto could have blocked the Bosnian thing and we were all in trouble. What they didn't say was they didn't block it. The EU-led mission in Bosnia was given the go-ahead even against the backdrop of the war in Ukraine. So the veto is not the problem. Irish troops were under every one stop from going anywhere in 65 years unbroken UN peacekeeping and that was blocked by China over they thought the troops should go somewhere else 
other than Macedonia. So the veto is not a problem. Defending multilateralism is, but when they say the triple lock is not fit for purpose, what they mean is the only purpose it is not fit for is missions that do not have a UN mandate. And what are they? They are missions like Iraq, like Afghanistan, like going into the Sahel, like going into what they call rapid response, which the EU has signed up to, into non-permissive environments. That means going into countries who don't want you there. That's the only thing that the triple lock is preventing the Irish government sending troops into, because all humanitarian missions, we can do it. Even EU training missions, which I personally would object to, but they don't require the triple lock. So this is an absolute nonsense. And the European Union can call it peacekeeping. It's not peacekeeping. They are advancing their geopolitical aims in the same way that the US, China, Russia, or whatever does when it goes into Africa and all of these countries as well. Yes, there are problems with the UN, but we've got to work to overcome them. And it is striking that Michal Martin's forum didn't have a single representative from the global south, from the 120 countries worldwide who are non-aligned, the countries who represent a majority of the world's population, countries like Mexico, which like us were colonized but now are independent and neutral. Why weren't they represented at the forum? Because as the lads have said, it's a racket, it's a con. It's not about security. Nobody obviously is going to buy in to a military agenda. Who in their right mind would argue that we should be spending money on arms when we have a huge housing prices, a poverty crisis, we need to deal with climate change. So they've got to convince you that there's a big body out there trying to get you. And if you don't be careful and you don't put the money in there, then we're all gone. It's threat inflation. These are the bag men of the arms industry dressed up in NATO and the like. And to justify their spend, they see Russians everywhere. If you've been tuning into the forum, you would have heard it. The Irish Times tell us they have to be very careful. There might be disinformation from foreign agents around the forum. Shock horror there was, but they're all US and UK ones, not Russian ones. They tell you anybody who disagrees with them is a Russian spy. Uh, we're actually Kremlin agents, uh, although, as I've said in other places, where the money goes, I don't know. They, they've mislaid the accounts because we haven't seen any of it. But anything Russia is threat inflated. So we hear about these Russian ships which are behaving suspiciously. They're going through international seas as they have a legal right to do. So there's a big hype about this. And then a couple of days later, you see, that Russian ship actually was bad weather that forced it in there, or they were parking there to refuel because of the sanctions they can't refuel anywhere else. And they're only one of many US, American, whatever, German, French, all the ships that go through the international seas. There's nothing suspicious about it at all. But it's the cables. It's the critical infrastructure that is going to be under attack. Wake up, people. We're in serious danger. Michal Martin said 97% of the cables are underground, as if they were all in the Atlantic. That's worldwide, Michal. We don't actually have a responsibility to police and mind those cables because they're all privately owned for starters. We had, I think it was Bridget Laffin or that woman from Chatham House who said, Ireland is now an international data centre hub. We have to protect the data of private multinationals who come in here who leech off our electricity, don't give any employment, and now we have to give up our, our neutrality to please them as well. Thank you. Mental. These people are mental. Because in the world, there are 400 undersea cables. And you know what? Every year, about 100 of them break down. Not because of Russian agents, but because of commercial fishing vehicles and accidental human activity or accidental weather. And I don't know if you've noticed it, but the world actually hasn't come to an end when 25% of them every year are banjaxed. There are six of them 
off the coast of Ireland. That's what we're talking about, six private cables. And they're all spread out in such differences that the Russians couldn't take them out together if they wanted to. And if they were at the stage when they were doing that, they'd be doing a lot else as well, and we wouldn't have to worry about it. Instead, we have a European Parliament report which spreads out and spells it out that they, there have been no verified attacks on a cable network by Russia, China, or any state group anywhere, except we're led to believe we have to ditch our neutrality because of this. We have to join NATO and work with NATO on the underground cables to protect ourselves. Well, what in God's name good would that do when the biggest actual attack on critical infrastructure, Nord Stream 2, took place in the middle of NATO heartland and nobody saw it or knows who was responsible for it? So, I don't think joining NATO is going to save us with that one, with our hypothetical threats on our infrastructure. It's a nonsense. It's instilling fear. It's the same with the cyber attacks. It's threat inflation. We should have nothing to do with it. We are a small country, as Eamon de Valera said, and in many ways I feel bad about quoting him, but in fairness to him on this issue, he said all a small country can do is resist being the tool of any great power, and he was right. We are against the backdrop of great power conflict. That's what's going on. We should have no part of it. All a small country can do is argue for the upholding of international law and the peaceful resolutions of disputes. And that has served us well so far. We are unique in the European Union as a former colonised country, but yet a, a, a mature democracy. As I said, we understand conflict. We should use that for good with the other 120 countries who are also non-aligned and neutral. It's not backward. It's not isolationist. It's not embarrassing. Actually, neutrality is the most progressive form of internationalism that you can have. And it was tied up in our peacekeeping, for which we are loved universally. 72,000 men and women going on in peacekeeping missions. It's part of struggles for self-determination, for decolonialization around the world. This is what the world and Europe needs. So we're privileged to be here. We're absolutely honored that you've taken the time out on this sweltering day to be here. It's part of one of the many successful pro-peace, anti-war, pro-neutrality meetings which have taken place over the course of the past week. And I think we know that we are going to be on the right side of history. There are threats to our security. Absolutely they are. But they come from great power conflict, from climate change and the like, and they will only be solved by international cooperation and peace. War never benefits ordinary people, be it in Ukraine, in Russia or wherever. War, it's always the poor people who are the cannon fodder while the men in suits pocket the cash. That's what's going on here. It's a con. It's a con that's been embedded at the heart of the European Union since the Lisbon Treaty in particular, which, as Mick said, it went on in steroids. That's what we're standing against. And we stand against it knowing that we do so with the support of the majority of the citizens of Europe. The people in power have misused it on this issue as in so many others. We represent the citizens of Europe up against the bankers, the warmongers and the vested interests that rule it. So take great solace in that and go forward. The next few weeks and months are going to be critical. We have damaged Mihal's efforts, there's no doubt about that. But the creep is on. It means you've got to take this energy, go out and make sure that there's no undermining of the triple lock. We activate now the passion that has been aroused in the past few uh, weeks and go forward to defend our neutrality and make it a real neutrality for once, not the bastardised version that we've had to put up with. So let's go forward and do that.